Welcome, everyone, to another inspiring episode of City State and True to Yourself. I'm your host, Tex Mambui, and I'm thrilled to have you join us today as we delve into conversation that encourages self-discovery and authenticity. And as we always say on here, pursue your dream, seize the day. But before we begin, let me introduce you to a remarkable individual who will be sharing her invaluable insights on today's episode. Like we always have guests on here, they come on here and share their journey. Please join me in welcoming the extraordinary Olivia McDonald, the host and creator of Thoughts by Live podcast. Olivia possesses a deep passion for exploring the human experience and delving into the realm of thought-provoking ideas. Through her podcast, Thoughts by Live, she fearlessly navigates through the complexities of life, engaging with thought leaders, experts, and individuals from all backgrounds. Live stands for authentically, and that's exactly what Livia embodies here. Her ability to foster meaningful conversations and her unwavering dedication to staying true to oneself make her a beacon of inspiration for our listeners. So without further ado, let's formally welcome Livia McDonald to Stay In True To Yourself podcast. Hello, Livia. Hi, thank you for having me today. We are glad to have you on the podcast today. So, yes. um, as we as we spoke about this before on the podcast, you know, we usually have uh, a few set questions that we ask our guests. And you were one of the few people that never wanted the questions ahead of time. You wanted it to be in the moment. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I would start off by first question is, uh, please expand about about yourself. Uh, what is what has inspired you to pursue your career path or where you at now? And can you share any formative experiences that have shaped you who you are today? How do your personal values align with the work you do or anything that you do? Like all that is like one really big question. So you have the floor. Yes, that is a big question. And I'm glad you asked it because honestly, my life journey has been a huge part of the reason why I am choosing the career path I am choosing, why I started the podcast and why I continuously you know, post about encouragement and motivation and making people feel heard, seen, and valued. So, um, growing up, I was always in all white um, environments. Um, and I used to get bullied for looking different and just coming from a different background. And so, I used to feel super insecure and kind of confused on who I was and I would feel lost as well as um, there was some mental health issues. I became depressed for a really long time and I always just felt kind of not seen or heard or valued and kind of confused on who I was and how to express myself um, fully, authentically. Like I always had to put up a front around others or um, try to be, yeah, something I'm not. And so I created spaces within my social media and even in person where when others speak and when others have anything different about themselves, they are still heard and they are still valued because, you know, there's nothing wrong with being different. It's beautiful and we are all different human beings, you know, living here. And I feel like it's just time to start embracing the authentic features we have, the unique features we have, because it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with us and it doesn't mean it's not worthy of being valued. It just simply means that um, we have different things to share. And so being able to embrace that, I really want to bring my podcast in and be there for people. I want to support, I want to motivate, I want to encourage. Um, That's ultimately my goal. And being a psychology major at Clark Atlanta University, HBCU Pride. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I feel like psychology is a great major for me to get started on that enlightenment path in my career because I eventually want to be a licensed psychologist as well as an entrepreneur. So kind of mixing those two together is the perfect way for, um, perfect way to, really start my career and where I want to head in the world and what I want to inspire and lead on and, you know, make an impact in the world, really make a mark. Um, So yeah, thank you for that question. And also I'm curious about what guided you to start yours. 
Um, well, first I'll say thank you for sharing that. That was uh, just very inspiring. And I can definitely say your podcast is also very inspiring too. I listen to it. Um, and for anybody out there who's listening to this, go check out her podcast, Thoughts by Live. A lot of great insight on there. Um, it's a great way for finding self-discovery. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess to answer your question, so for me, the reason I had started this podcast was honestly because I wanted to kind of understand how society works in terms of, yeah. I like writing, but I wanted to see how I could put my writing in different forms. So I started like recording myself in terms of like my writings and stuff. I started writing, I started like writing, uh, like I published some books and I thought about you know, audiobooks, but then I was like, I don't really don't want to have an audiobook, but I'd rather have a platform that's kind of an audio. It's kind of attached to me as like as an author. So it's kind of what inspired me to do that. But then also, um, I just like podcasts, honestly. And yeah. Yeah. I uh I enjoy doing it. I've always I started off to where the goal was to have people featured on here to mm. display their unique journey and kind of for them to share their their narrative because the mm-hmm. whole reason I believe in is uh, people have the control of their narrative. Nobody else can control their narrative. So that was mm-hmm. that's how I started it off. But then as I kind of grew a little bit more, I started doing um, individual takes of me just of myself in the podcast. Uh, I started off on YouTube first, then mm-hmm. I think I transitioned it to uh, podcasting, and then now I can do I can do all all types of forms in all different ways so that's kind of what inspired me and the goal was to kind of reach um audiences not within just my regular circle but into other spaces that i might not (laughs) be in so yeah that's what inspired me to do it yes no that's that's amazing thank you for sharing that too yeah um so next question i have for you and um it kind of ties back to you know you back to yourself in terms of your journey um you shared about you know about yourself how you started your podcast and mm-hmm. kind of what inspired you so the next thing i kind of would like to for you to share is what is your biggest accomplishment in life and explain why and you know talk about like any challenges you faced while achieving those accomplishments how those accomplishments influence your like personal growth or mindset um also like describe like any lessons or insights you gained from those experiences Thank you for that question. Yeah, that's a big one. And it's a question where it might be an answer that's not common. Like, I feel like when it comes to like accomplishments, like this accomplishment, I don't really think about like the material stuff, like oh, getting my degree or getting into a university or um, winning a contest or being on a magazine. Like those are accomplishments, but I feel like the one that has impacted my life the most is me gaining confidence and clarity on who I am and being able to create with that because that's what's allowed me to break through barriers and go outside my comfort zones, you know, like joining different things, starting different things, starting projects because I believe in myself. I feel like that is a huge, a huge accomplishment of mine that let's say like five years ago, I didn't have, I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the, the clarity and like in myself to start all these personal projects I have. So I would say me gaining clarity and confidence in who I am is my biggest accomplishment today because it's allowed me to expand and grow in so many different ways. Wow. That's inspiring. Um, you made me not think about how I perceive. <laughs> you made me kind of think differently in terms of how I perceive accomplishments. Um, yeah. So that's actually, I hope that people can learn from that and kind of see that there's different ways of perceiving um, things that make you proud or happy. So Right. Pretty nice. Um, so in terms of yourself, what do, you, what do you think makes you feel you are different from anyone else? Mm, that's, a, that's a good one. I... Yeah, that's a difficult conversation because I feel like we all have so many different aspects to ourselves and so many like characteristics that we're able to embody. But I will say that I am a very understanding person. Like, I do feel like there's not too many people I come across that can truly um, see from so many different perspectives. Like, oh, I understand this person or, oh, I can see how 
you know, they would believe this. You know, sometimes it's like black or white. No, I think it's this or I think it's that. But I kind of see myself as being able to see both sides of everything all the time. And I feel like that's because I grew up seeing two sides of the world at all times. (laughs) Through, like, the white side of my family and the black side of my family. Like, I always experienced like two different worlds and so I was able to understand where other people are coming from um I feel like that's something that's different about me I know that there are obviously other people who definitely see multiple different perspectives too but that's just what I've noticed within myself in different backgrounds and environments and even within like my family like I see myself as having a lot of um broad perspectives and kind of accepting multiple different perspectives Mm, so have you like faced any like challenges or benefits related to your uniqueness um sorry do you mind repeating that question one more time i was saying have you like faced any challenges or like benefits related to uniqueness Um, yes, there definitely has been some challenges, uh, definitely, because... And what are some of those challenges? Well, sometimes people don't like that you can think both. It's like, I want you to either think this, or I want you to either think that. Like, the whole Democrat versus Republican thing. You know, a lot of people (laughs) choose one side, like, they really do. They're like, no, you can only be this, or you can only be that. And it's like, but what if you can pull values from both parties? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. I don't like that having to stay in one box. I don't like that you have to either be for this or you have to either be for that. Like in some situations, yes. Like when it comes to harming others or harming yourself, I'm always gonna be like black or white type thing. But when it comes to like perspectives and opinions on other stuff, like I'm very much like not in one box. <laughs> Like, I will be all over the place. And so I don't even like to claim a certain party or claim a certain this. It's like, I see from so many different perspectives. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I would definitely, I definitely agree to that. Um, but I would definitely say in terms of like, you know, the whole <laughs> choose the party thing. Like yeah. for, me, for me, I definitely, I, I would definitely choose a side when it comes to those. But at, mm. the, sa- at, the, at the same, at the same, I only say that just because it's, I just know myself and yeah. Um, in terms of just how even what I study in school and all that stuff, it's just yeah. you got you got to choose a side, you know. And the reason I say that is because uh, I like that quote, but I think it's by Frederick Douglass. It talks about um, I think if you're neutral, I, I can't remember the quote exactly, but. Mm. Mm. Some about neutrality when it comes to those type of things, and now for me, I'll definitely choose a side when it comes to either, you know Democrats or Republican. But I, yeah. I, I, I see what you mean when it comes to this to the self. Um, I can't really choose a side for that I, as long as it's something that is being uh, productive and allowing for the sense of as human beings, I can allow people to have peace, harmony. If I can, do, if exactly. I can choose, if I can choose to do those things and whatever I can do, then that's what I, of course I would choose, but at the same time, you know, emotions do get in the way of, you know, situational uh, things and judgment making. So can't really control those things, but yeah. I definitely would say those are some things that for me, I can say are definitely unique to myself is I can be very, you know, I can use the challenges in, um, in, in the benefit to myself as long as I understand there's something I'm putting back in return to society not just myself so right yeah and I I definitely get that like I I do come up from a family of um Democrats and I see why there has to be one side chosen but I, I do see sometimes like the benefit in financial stuff with Republicans. You know what I mean? Like, not to get into politics too far. Like, there are so. Oh, many we can. I don't, we can get into. We can get into politics. I love it. No, That's what I not st- to get into, because there's so many things that on the Republican table that I really don't agree with at all. But there's some things from the party where I'm like, okay, like that could be sprinkled into this Democratic Party. You know what I'm saying? Like, it could be beneficial in a way. It's like. Yeah, so it's very... I just feel like having to choose and, like, having to put yourself in one box can sometimes be a little... Yeah, like, makes you believe all things about this one thing 
rather than trying to explore a little bit of another yeah one, if that makes sense yeah yeah i always i always tell myself this or whenever somebody asks me i usually say um I'm a social liberal, liberal, yeah, <laughs> but, but I'm a fiscal conservative. <laughs> right, like I don't know. See, I need to like learn all those terms because the whole <laughs> politic thing it gets me so like makes me like wow, like everyone wants you to just choose one certain like part, like they're you know what I mean. So I I've never been extremely involved in it, but yeah, it's nah, that's true. Yeah. Um, let's kind of transition to like kind of a this is like a little segment um, just a, of a topic that we can have um, so I just recently I did an episode recently yeah um, where <laughs> I was talking about the concept of heartbreak and embracing the significance of the moments we experience in relationships so I kind of I kind of just wanted to get your insight on this for you to share to the world about this um, do you think that there is um there's a difference between, I guess, heartbreak versus like feeling lonely. Mm, mm, definitely a huge difference. In and that. what would you say that difference is? Um, with heartbreak, the reason why you may be feeling lonely, it's just an aspect of heartbreak. Like feeling lonely is just like one of the aspects and it's because you've just lost someone who was so close to you or meant so much to you and that's the reason why you may feel lonely for a bit because you're starting to discover life without them or what it's like without them but feeling lonely that's like you don't have someone you're super close to you can just be in a room with a bunch of people you're close to quote unquote and still feel like you're not with anyone like still feel like you're not connected I feel like with heartbreak it's like grief like you're losing someone and with loneliness it's it's feeling disconnected it's feeling disconnected from yourself and from others and not knowing really where to turn but with heartbreak it's like you know the reason why like you are connected to that person but you can't be with them if that makes sense yeah I, mean, I, I see what you're saying so so the question I have though is could it could it be that our interpretation of these emotions magnifies the pain and perpetuates the myth of heartbreak as an overwhelming force okay you're gonna have to repeat that one more time <laughs> i was just saying can can it could it be that our interpretation of um like these emotions we experience and yeah. these perceptions we magnify mm. uh to be related to the pain and and then does it perpetuate the myths of heartbreak as an overwhelming force you know i don't think so I don't think that it's over exaggerated or anything like I feel like it really is an overwhelming force I feel like it really is that like when you connect to someone on like that type of level and you lose them it's it's overwhelmingly difficult <laughs> it I is see, like I that, see what you mean. <laughs> that can't be that can't be no it's not perpetuated no it's not in my okay. opinion, in my opinion, I'm you know, I, I go lie. I kind of disagree a little bit, but okay, I okay. Well, I want to hear why. I, I do agree, why. though. I do agree, though. You know, I feel like um, heartbreak is definitely something like like we uh, we make it a bigger deal than what it is. You know, because I I think for like a heartbreak to be considered a heartbreak, I guess right. Mm. it's definitely something tied to an, an emotion the thing is though is that what type of emotion is that is it anger is it uh, a, a loving emotion is it uh, you know instant gratification type of uh, heartbreak mm -hmm. or is it mm -hmm. like satisfaction type of heartbreak is it an accomplishment emotion that's being heartbroken so I feel like sometimes we over glorify the whole <laughs> aspect of relationship heartbreak because the reason that is the relationship is not going on anymore is because of indifferences and we're not indifferences i mean differences people are having differences in their perspectives which is fair and it's it should be you know i agree to disagree you know you can't be you can't tell someone what to do and expect them to keep doing what you want them to do because that technically right there should be considered a heartbreak in any moment. I feel like in any moment people have disagreements in relationships, 
that is a moment of heartbreak because your mm. heart is not your heart is not getting what it wants. Um, mm. Mm. But I, I can definitely see from the from the magnified uh, perspective of let's um, you know somebody's like for example let's use it for like a relationship way. People breaking up is definitely gonna cause some form of um, heartbreak, right? But there's also other types of heartbreaks. For example, my okay. biggest, the biggest heartbreak I see in, in the in the Western, you know, hemisphere is the United States writing a breakup letter to Europe saying that, like, hey guys, we're gonna break up from y'all and say we're gonna be an independent country, so called the Declaration of Independence. That's a heartbreak. That's a heartbreak letter, technically. Is it that. though? I mean, do you think <laughs> that people or individuals were really hurt? Well, I mean. The- Maybe some individuals were upset about it, but you think they were heartbroken by it? I mean, I guess. I mean, people died, and then that caused grief, and then that. Oh, right, of course. You know, and it might. I don't know. I I feel it's just an interesting thing about because I was thinking about that because I was listening to. uh, Oh, I was. You know how music is one of the ways people connect. It's a way for people to have a similarity and relevance of something they can share together, right? Mm. And I was listening to, I think, what is it called? Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it was it was a song. It's a song from like the seventies, right. and the the way the song is made versus how that song is now being reused again for this with the same original instrumentals. The instrumentals that are being used now, the words that are being put to the to the sound now, is more talking about heartbreak versus how the original instrumental was made. So, it just for me, I just looked at it from a perspective of like, huh. So, is there like a do we magnify this thing to be so big that to where we forget that who we are actually as human beings? Mm. Um, and that's kind of why I was just curious about that because. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was doing, I did, I did this podcast episode. It was like me uh, just talking about that and kind of reflecting the reflection on relationship moments. Um, and then the question that I still can't really come to find out or understand is why do we let the concept of heartbreak kind of overshadow the value of the moments that led to that so-called heartbreak? Right. We kind of dwell on the fact that like, oh, this is, uh, but but I feel like we should dwell now on the moments that actually led up to that heartbreak. The good moments, the bad moments. Instead of just dwelling on that specific thing that's making you feel like you're going to be distant, you know? So. Right. Well, I feel like it leads to that eventually. It leads to the point where you're able to reflect back and be grateful for the moments you did have and appreciate the, the experiences you had with the person. But in the moment it happens, you have to allow yourself to grieve, grieve first. You're gonna wanna heal, you're gonna wanna cry it out, you're gonna wanna make the realize changes in your life where it's like, okay, this person's no longer here or this is how it is now, things are different. You're kind of grieving what was and then after you grieve it, after you release it and after you heal, you're able to look back and appreciate and notice. You're kind of in like a, a place, like a hole where all you're able to see is the darkness when you're healing And then it's like, once you're out of that, you're able to make the realizations and look back at all the light. And then all the light that's in front of you as well for what's to come. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, you should definitely, you should, uh, you should make an episode on your podcast about this. (laughs) About, about relationships, about heartbreak? Yeah, you should. I think you should. You should make a good, you you probably make a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. (laughs) <laughs> but um have you ever been in love is that something you've experienced um i don't what, what do you mean love like what do you mean like in a, in terms of like relationship wise yeah um so uh, damn am i I, I you know that's a lot yeah. of hesitating that's a lot of hesitating <laughs> texts <laughs> like you either know or you don't um, I say I can definitely say I've been in love with the game of I've been in love with sports. I have okay. been in love with um I guess in terms of somebody, yes, I could yeah, sure. Yeah, I say yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> but, uh, let's get back to that one. <laughs> do, do, hey, do I wanna com- do I wanna conform myself to saying that like I was in love because of the definition society has no i was in i was in love because of 
I felt most comfortable and the most actually insecure when I was in that feeling. So that's what I think. It is a vulnerable feeling. It's difficult. Yeah. I understand. But yeah, I guess to make it short, yes, I I have, I guess, nerve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm over it, though. (laughs) No, I get that. I get that. It's honestly, and you can have different loves. Like, yeah, it doesn't just have to be a person, it can be a sport. Honestly, I feel like I'm in love with podcasting. You know, I'm in love with art. I'm in love with music. You know, like, I really do think I'm in love with things that are not a person as well. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's definitely me. Yeah. Uh, so now I kind of transition out this talk. That was just a little segment of us just talking about. I was yeah. just talking because I, I made an episode about that. Um, yeah, it's dope. A few weeks ago. So, mm-hmm. so going back to now talking about you. Um, so the kind of the next thing I want you to kind of share about um is do you understand the essence of like your existence um and can you share any specific moments or realizations that have contributed to like your own understanding mm. and how has the and how has this understanding influenced the way you live your life mm. or make decisions mm-hmm. and do you have like any advice for others who are seeking to explore the essence of their own existence Wow, that's a beautiful question. That's very deep. And I don't think anyone's ever asked me anything like that before. I love that. Um, Yes, the essence of my existence. Honestly, I used to have something that is called... I don't know. Actually, I don't know the name of it. I'm not going to diagnose myself. But sometimes I would trip out at the fact that I'm, like, here and... I know this sounds this might sound crazy to some people but just like the fact that like I'm a human being you know with a spirit like living here on earth like sometimes when you think about like the general overall aspect of it it blows your mind that we're here and we're on this planet earth and it's like there's so many incredible things here and I feel like every day I really take the time to look at the small details like the trees and like the flowers and like the air and food and just like style and fashion and all these creations and just like admire the fact that I'm here like we don't really take a lot of time to realize like wow like there was all of this beauty here and I get to experience it and I used to never see that because you know when you're depressed you don't want to be here at all you you know it depends on your level of depression but for me i didn't really see the essence of my existence i thought it was pointless and i thought that you know it just wasn't something i needed to experience or indulge in or expand in or even try to you know really get into but once you know the depression dissipated and i really got to experience and create from like a place of a clarity and um, confidence, I realized that I have purpose here. And there's so much that I can explore and expand on here. And I feel like, yeah, just like the day-to-day things, like really taking in the small details, romanticizing your life. That's actually like my next podcast episode coming out on Sunday, you know, about really seeing like all the pockets of beauty within your life like within yourself as well as like just your environment no matter where you find yourself um so i i don't know if that answered your question but um yeah that's kind of what um i think of when you ask that um no it definitely does um i was gonna ask if you could like just expand more i'm gonna gonna give us a little snippet of what you're gonna be having for the next episode Yes, so on my next episode, it's like how to romanticize your life this summer. And so I speak on habits that help me romanticize my life. And if you don't know what romanticizing your life is, it's really just like finding the pockets of beauty within your life. Um, You know, just being able to analyze and really take in and be present and be mindful and just find the joy and peace. And a lot of that has to do with like healing your inner child. And healing your inner child is kind of taking moments of trauma from when you were a child. So I used an example, like I never used to wear my hair down. 
like I would always wear it up super tight or straightened so you know people can see my natural hair because I never knew how to take care of it I never saw anyone around with my type of hair and I was like you know it's too puffy it's too this and I used to get comments on my hair like negative comments and so I would always keep it up um but then like I feel like romanticizing my life is allowing myself, allowing my inner child to be healed by me wearing my hair down now and doing different styles and really appreciating and seeing the beauty in my hair, in myself, because I was given all of these beautiful, wonderful things about myself and it's time to start embracing them and start, it's time to start loving them and seeing the beauty in them. Because when you see the beauty within yourself, you really see it within your outer world as well. So romanticizing your life is, yeah, really seeing the beauty within yourself, healing your inner child and allowing yourself to see it in the outer world too, and really taking in the moments to be present and mindful of them. So that's what I talked about. Okay, well, I really, thank, I really appreciate you for sharing this, and I look forward to listening to that episode. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I really appreciate you for sharing about you know what makes you feel like you have purpose, mm-hmm. which kind of which which kind of leads to the next question is like, do you have any works, publications, projects, or like content um, that you would like to share? Can you provide more details about the specific projects and how have these works, you know? impacted your professional or personal journey and are there like any upcoming things that you would like to share i know you got the podcast uh but mm-hmm. i and i know you uh, probably got a lot of other things going on and um uh, mm-hmm. if you'd like to share that and also just just before you do that i just want to give a shout out to clark Carolina university woohoo yes. um, go, go panthers mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i just want to say that but any anyways yeah before Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so the, I am working on several projects, like some projects that are even going into my future, like 10 years from now, which is kind of crazy. But I have big dreams and like, you know, it's really about starting where you are, taking the idea and just slowly building with it. So there are a lot of projects I have going on. I'm only going to share um, two of them because actually, no, just one, because I feel like there's power and silence in certain situations. Not that I don't trust you, but it's just Amen. Like, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is. So, yeah. But I guess one project I'm really diving deep in this summer is I have a YouTube channel. And not just my Thoughts by Live podcast YouTube channel, but I have, like, a regular YouTube channel where I kind of go into, like, um, my life, like, outside of podcasting. So I'm going to Brazil next week, and I was going to vlog that. Like, my... Yes, and then um, I'm probably going to show like CAU stuff once I get to campus and stuff. And so kind of a more personal approach, I, I would say, kind of just like of the adventures. And like, I also do sit down talks too, but they're not the same topics as like my podcast. So yeah, I, I guess that's the project I'm kind of diving deep into this summer, really working on like my personal YouTube just as much as my podcast. Wow. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say I'm a little jealous. You go to Brazil. Um, <laughs> I was I was actually supposed to go to Brazil in February, but uh, mm. I got I, I got too busy with school, so I was like, ah, oh well. Um, but I hope you have a lot of fun out there. Learn a little bit of Portuguese. And, um, yes, obrigado. That's thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when you go out there, play as much soccer as you can. That's all I can say. Okay, you're a soccer guy. Yeah. Hell yeah. So make sure you yeah. play as much over there. Um, so in terms of like, you know, the projects, I would definitely say keep it up, keep it pushing. And I, I like how you said there's power in silence. And, you know, something I, I would definitely share. I, I never really share a lot. Is I actually like being sometimes in silence in my own thoughts. You know, mm-hmm. like, I, I don't even like, sometimes I don't even like listening to music or whatever. I just want to be silent in my own thoughts. Yeah. And I find myself really appreciating that um, the more and more <coughs> I grow. So yeah. appreciate you for sharing that. Um, next thing is, how would you describe yourself in three words? Oh, wow. That's and, it, and then elaborate on how those three words represent the different aspects of your personality or character and how do you embody these words in your day-to-day life? Yeah, um, mm, that's a difficult one. I would have to say I would see myself as understanding, open, and graceful. 
I think those those are the th- the first three that just came to mind. Like I didn't really put much thought into it, but yeah, I think understanding, open, and graceful. I would, you know, I kind of expanded on how I'm a really understanding person, and I really try to see from people's perspectives and try to, you know, make sure they feel valued and seen and understood. So I feel like that's a part I really try to get into. Like, if I just meet someone and they're completely different from me or we have different opinions, I really want to try to get to know why they feel that way or why this is how they see things and have a conversation about it you know I don't do that with every single person but like people I feel like I want to get deeper into I like to try and understand them um and I would say I'm an open person because yeah I feel like for the most part I'm very like welcoming and inviting obviously I put up boundaries with people I don't see myself clicking with or for people who don't respect me but I feel like I'm a very open person when it comes to like collaborations or meeting new people like I I want you to know I see you I want you to know that you know I'm here and like I like trying new stuff so I feel like yeah I would say open and then graceful I don't know I just feel like um my confidence is kind of like a subtle confidence like I'm very it's from like I don't know it comes from like a a a peaceful kind of calm way and so I see myself as just moving graceful I see that yeah okay um really appreciate you sharing that and definitely gonna remember you said understanding open and graceful yes awesome so now shifting to like the next question this next question is going to tie back to what you just said right Mm. are you are you a developer or a pursuer the reason I asked this question this is actually like the original question I used to ask on um, when I started my podcast is I used to I used to try to, to distinguish people between are people developers or pursuers and I would like write a profile blog on them I used to do it was pretty cool oh, wow. um, but can you kind of you know share like an example of how you approach as a developer or pursuer um, and kind of distinct kind of distinguish yourself you can also you can also be both if you like so. yeah I was gonna tell I was gonna say I'm definitely both like a hundred percent and the reason for that is because I feel like I have a lot of ideas and a lot of projects and I develop those and I develop on conversations like I'm I I tend to be someone who keeps continuing a conversation or asks another question and kind of develops and develops and keeps going and expanding Um, but I also at the same time pursue a lot like when I start up the idea I keep going and I allow myself to be persistent and I also like to motivate and encourage others to keep pursuing their dreams like I like to develop things and I also like to encourage so I would say both okay that's awesome that's awesome yeah Yeah, I'm always uh I'm also I'm always interchanging I think between those depending Mm -hmm. on like what I'm doing and how I perceive things so Mm -hmm. um it's really beautiful what you just said though thank you Um, so on like a scale of one to ten um how committed are you to city which stands for stay and true to yourself how committed are you to that for yourself extremely extremely like that's a huge as you know like that's how we connect like that's a huge part of my podcast like staying authentic being unique being yourself I think it's so important because that's when you really start to live your life joyfully and I know that from personal experience like putting up a front trying to be someone I'm not for so long or just trying to fit in with the crowd and just not make a big deal of things and just stay low that's when I was the most unhappy in my life this far I I really did not enjoy hiding I did not enjoy putting up a front and just living my life not truly as who I was so it's an extremely important to stay true to yourself is it's really important to really find out who you are and make sure that you surround yourself with individuals who uplift the true you the authentic you who you can be yourself around like that is so important Awesome. So I still haven't heard a number, you know, on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> oh, you said you said a number on a scale of one to ten. Oh, so sorry. Um, sounded like a ten to me, but uh, I want to hear. It yeah, from you. no, ten out of ten for sure. For gotcha. Sure. Okay. Yeah, 
Um, for me also, I'm also 10 out of 10 on that. That's the whole reason I named um, the podcast City because it stands for staying true to yourself. Mm. Turn it into a nonprofit, you know, do all that stuff that value this, mm. turn, turn the value of self into community. So, mm-hmm. congratulations. Um, oh, by the way. Thank you. And that's kind of the, I'm, a, I'm, I would say if I'm not even 10 out of 10, I am 100 out of 10 or a thousand percent. I, you know, it's always pursue your dream and seize a day and always remember to stay true to yourself because nobody else can control your narrative. So that's kind of what I go along with that. Um, Yes. And so now as we come here to end, this kind of last question. Yeah. This is this is for you to like, you know, leave your impact on our listeners or just in general. If you were to be quoted on how to stay in true to yourself, what would you say? What would your quote be? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be that moment of silence right here. <laughs> I don't have to think. <laughs> Okay. Um, Every day is a new opportunity to experience something you love, to love on others, and to love on you. I wish I could, like, I don't know if you can snap snap into that. (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely the quote. Gotcha. Okay. Would you like to expand on uh, that, or you just want to leave it like Um, that? Yeah, no, I can expand on it. I feel like it's, like, you know, when we're having those days where it's just not the best day, I feel like waking up the next day, it's like, today is a new opportunity. You have another chance to really indulge in things you love, the people you love, and loving on you. Like, you have a whole new, brand new chance. You have 24 hours to really live your life in a way that's embodied with love joy and peace and i feel like just having that new opportunity each day is a beautiful thing point blank period wow and i would just say city stay in truth to yourself carpe diem right there awesome (laughs) awesome um and that kind of brings us to i have no more um questions i usually ask on the podcast i mean i could ask you a few more but I know we're limited on time here. We're at crunch time. Oh, I appreciate um, you keeping that in mind. So that brings us kind of to the end of this captivating, right. ep- cap- right. captivating episode of uh, City State Entry to Yourself. Mm-hmm. And I just want to extend um, my thank you to you and saying I really appreciate you yeah. for sh- coming on here and sharing your insight, your perspective. And I'm so excited to hear what your podcast is going to be doing next. Um, and awesome first of all I would also give a shout out to We Are Panthers CAU yes. you know, you know. yes. um, yeah, we can do the whole champ but we won't get into that actually you know it's, you know what's funny I'm actually still trying to learn the chant you know? oh yeah <laughs> I'm so, no. like, I, f- I feel so wrong about that because I actually don't really know it all the way no I actually get you like it, you know that was my first semester just the prior semester we just had and it did take me a minute but like Clark Atlanta C-L-A-R-K Atlanta yeah that one took me a minute but <laughs> I got it now yeah I still don't know I just finished my first year there and I can't even <laughs> I can't I still don't know but yeah. Hopefully, okay. in time, I I get it before I graduate. Yeah. Um, but we want to give big thanks to you, uh, to all our audience and the listeners out there. This is Livy McDonald. She's the host of Thoughts by Live podcast, and yeah. just want to say thank you for sharing your unique insights yeah. and um, perspectives with us today, and um, your insight, your perspective, mm-hmm. your knowledge, your wisdom, and the authenticity you brought today has definitely been inspiring to me and I hope it's inspiring other people and I'm hoping we can have you back on here for another <laughs> for another episode and hopefully maybe I might be on her podcast y'all we never know it's up to her yes. you know yes. um, and I hope that our listeners out have found something of inspiration and can take something away that can be useful that relates back to also the quote that you said so yeah. uh, and also remember everybody each day is an opportunity to pursue your dream and seize the day. So before we get it all done, um, Olivia, is there anything you would like to share? Anything you would like to say? Any upcoming projects? I know you said about that. 
um but in, and in other ways for people to connect with you um or reach out to you many times so it's up to you the floor is yours yeah um well you guys can check me out on uh, my instagram because that has all my links so at livia mcdonald is just my regular personal instagram and then at thoughts by live podcast on instagram is also another great place to find me because i just have all my links there and then as well as at livia mcdonald on youtube and yeah that's that's that thank you for having me i really appreciate it it was a fun episode we really got deep and yeah i just thank you for welcoming it welcoming me in awesome sweet fantastic uh so thank you again livia and um we really appreciate you for joining the podcast today and to all our listeners out there um actually real quick before we end i always do this i forgot i always do this on the podcast so livia so i usually say this it it starts with you okay let's say that together we're gonna have to say that together all know? right it's one oh. one <laughs> one two three it, it starts, starts with... with you let's do it again okay. one <laughs> one two three it, it starts, starts with, with you. you awesome so um check out her podcast that's why live it's available on our platforms and then be on the lookout for uh Lady the battle youtube channel and uh remember embrace your authenticity pursue your mm-hmm. dreams seize the day with purpose and passion until next time thank you all for listening and peace out